Good afternoon, Poggy Sports. Welcome to another VGC Battle Stadium Series 12 video, bringing you a Porygon Z team. You guys remember Series 6? Porygon Z and Clefairy were tearing it up back in the day. We're going to bring them onto the ladder to see how they fare in Series 12, exactly six series later. Um, but we're also running a Blastoise Dynamax as a secondary option. I mean, Blastoise can be a very good, uh, you know, follow up supportive mon, depending on if you don't know which Pokemon you're going to Dynamax, whether it's going to be the Porygon or the Blastoise. Obviously, we're probably not going to bring both uh, to the same battle. But the, it's there as a secondary option. Um, along with that, we, we've been using Blastoise on Twitch for a very long time. If you guys don't follow Twitch or our Pokesports Twitch, go ahead and do so. Link should be in the description. Um, so, I mean, we, we are familiar with Blastoise. We know how to play Blastoise teams. And Blastoise teams, you know, love the Calyrex Shadow and love the Zacian. So here they are as well. Uh, but the goal of the video is going to be obviously to use Porygon Z as many times as we possibly can. This team is by Larissio. Make sure to link their stuff down below in the description if I can find it. But I'm super excited to try this team. I think Porygon 2 has a certain place in the meta, but especially now that there aren't that many fighting types. Obviously, we have to worry about Zacians running around, but that's what the Incineroar is for. Um, so, yeah. Super excited. If you guys are excited to see Porygon 2 here on the channel, you know, do hit the like button down below and subscribe to Pokesports if you haven't done so already. And let's get on to today's battles. Okay, well, thankfully, we weren't born yesterday and we've played this team on the channel before. So we know that their inevitable goal is going to be, hey, let me explode right away. And since that is the case, I think our goal has to become to prevent the Tailwind um probably lose an ensign in the uh, you know in the i could also bring blastoise i was gonna say lose an ensign in the aftermath but i guess it could be either blastoise or ensign um i do believe that blastoise with helping hand might be the better option so if we go blastoise pz bring zation in the back bring calyrex in the back we should oh I have too many Pokemon. Oh, I messed up. Oh, well, I'm out of time. Uh oh. <laughs> My goal has to be to prevent the Tailwind and to knock out and to allow the Whim to just die through the Misty Explosion. I, I didn't expect to, you know. Oh, does that mean I didn't bring Calyrex? That could be very bad. Okay, it's fine. We thankfully know exactly what's happening. We know exactly what's going on. We know what to expect. We know all the abilities, all the moves, all the items. I think our goal here has to just be fake out with one of our mons and protect with the other if we can. Well, this one doesn't have protect, so I guess we have to fake out that one. We also don't have protect here. Do I, do I Dynamax Blastoise this time just so I protect? Honestly, yes. I think it's I think it's too important to just let them take two of my mons right now. Right? Let's just have them take their own Pokemon and then we'll worry about the next turn. Now, if they are smart and they do expect me to do this, which they should. I mean, I'm leading with two Pokemon that are commonly known for faking out. Um, then they'll probably switch up their moves or protect themselves. Wim does just protect itself. Okay, cool. Fine. Fine by me. Double protect. Just so the fake out means nothing. My guard also does mean nothing. My Dynamax also does mean nothing. So this is currently bad. Um, but at the very least, we can try getting a cannonade off. I just don't think it'll happen. Uh, I need to switch into something that could probably take that. And I think Zacian is the... Yeah, I think honestly switching to Zacian might sound like a dumb idea, but it, it, I know that it will take the hit. And if I can get a hit off here, that'd be great. I just don't think I'll be able to. I could have tried to double guard here. But just in case they, they do something strange, I guess this is a pretty decent option. I do think if I let with PZ... Yeah, there's Tailwind. That's fine. And now here's the Kaboom. Yeah, this is why we're switching to Zacian, because we, we could definitely take that a lot better than Incineroar can. I mean, I know Incineroar doesn't mind it too much, but it still doesn't appreciate it. Blastoise also didn't take too much from it as well. It just does make my second Dynamax turn absolutely useless. So kind of a kind of a bad sign for now.
If I could stall the Tailwind without letting their uh, Calyrex to get too ahead, I maybe have a chance. Our biggest issue is the fact that the Zacian is not going to outspeed the Calyrex here. I think Instant might be our only way out. Just constantly swapping this Instant back and forth. So let's do just that. Followed by hopefully an eventual... Oh, we should max strike. Hold on. We're not going for KOs. I mean, cannonade damage would be so nice. What do we prefer? Max strike or cannonade? Honestly, max strike might make Zacian outspeed. So I think max strike is so important. If we can somehow manage to get this max strike off, it's honestly ideal. We just gotta nerf this uh, this Calyrex to the ground. We also have to remember that they have ally switch on Oranguru, which can be annoying. But thankfully, it doesn't actually matter who we hit in this scenario. Okay, there's weakness policy. It's gonna bring it up to plus one. Symbiosis is not going to give it the choice band. It's going to be at plus two, theoretically, and it goes for the Glacial Lance. Thankfully, we take it with both our Mons. Not well, though. That was not well in the slightest. But hey, we got a max strike off, so we're slowing them down. They can't alter their speed. I mean, they do have Trick Room on Oranguru, which is why this Oranguru is actually a bigger threat than anything else right now. It's such an issue. You have to KO both of them. It's like... You can't just let one get away with what it's doing. All right, I'm going to fake out Cali. And then yawn Cali. I need to put this thing to sleep. I This is how I deal with it. This is this is the only way to deal with it, honestly, at this point. There's a the fake out. Don't ally switch. Of course you ally switch. I, I mean, I'm happy that I get to put it to sleep at least. At least I know it can't trick room on that side. I really need to hope for... <sighs> Should I double? I'm going to try to on that spot. They could ally switch again, but we'll see. I just don't see like a big reason why they would. I mean, they get a double KO here no matter what I do. Because they should double outspeed me, especially in Tailwind. But the good thing is, if they knock both of my Mons out, I think Tailwind runs out next turn. If not next turn, the following turn, I could double protect with my Mons. Uh, they do have the Dynamax left, though. Stop with this nonsense, man. Uh, okay. It should still be okay, because they were going to kill us anyway. It's just annoying to see it, because like they even click it when it doesn't mean anything. All right, double KO for them, a double Glacial Lance boost for them. I'm going to cry myself to sleep, but at least our Ranguru is asleep as well. Blastoise did one thing here. No, it did two things. I'm pretty sure Zacian outspeeds now. And now they can't ally switch and save themselves. Okay, now Zacian 100% outspeeds. So now it's just Porygon and Zacian all the way. They're choice banded so that we know that they, they just can't live a Behemoth Blade. So all we have to do, theoretically, is one-shot this Calyrex with Zacian, which should theoretically... That should be easy, right? That I say theoretically, but it's just obviously going to one-shot it. There's not a single way this doesn't one-shot, so I'm just going to click it. Behemoth, followed by Deep Pulse onto a Ranguru. We have to start chipping it away, so we might as well just do it this way. They're going to Dynamax. That shouldn't change anything. This should not change the outcome because the way Behemoth Blade works is that if you do Dynamax, I do double damage. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess you might as well click Dynamax on somebody just because, like, why not? But still, Behemoth Blade, you can buy Calyrex Ice. The thing is, that, that's a problem with this team in particular is that once you know what it does, you can just prepare for it, right? You, you just look at it. It's like, oh, that's why it's the best of one cheese because the second you face it, a second time, it's a heck of a lot easier. Now, there isn't much that an Oranguru can do while it's asleep. We neutralize their ally switch. So here's a life, life or boosted dark pulse. P2, PZ, I'm going to keep calling it P2 by accident. I, guys, I have PTSD from Tracing Wonderguard. Now, everything that looks like a duck is a P2. Regardless, that's game. There's nothing Oranguru can do. 
So nice commanding victory. I mean, they did not got both of our Pokemon. They did get a boost with Calyrex Ice. But the issue with Calyrex Ice is that it is slow. So once Tailwind goes away, if you can't wipe the enemy team in those four turns, you're, you're just kind of behind. The Veltalization team with a Garchomp on it. Also Shedinja. It's worth noting. Shedinja could be a little bit terrifying. Um, I think PZ is possible. It's definitely not optimal. It is possible, though. Like, I think it can do some serious work as long as we uh, get it set up correctly and set up nicely. Um, I'm wondering if the Clefairy comes here. I honestly think so, because they don't have a lot of spread moves on their team. So we could take advantage of that. I mean, they do have a Zacian that's going to one-shot the, the Clefairy, and I'm almost inclined to say maybe Clefairy should get the Sash instead of the Eevee Light, but then what would you give the Calyrex? Speaking of Calyrex, I think Calyrex doesn't come this game. I think it just doesn't do much. I mean, it would outspeed their Zacian. It would outspeed their Garchomp. But Insin can also stop those two Pokemon, theoretically, just by existing and constantly swapping Intimidates on them. So I think we'll bring Insin instead. There's also a Choppleberry Ensign, which is kind of cool because Zacians can't Sacred Sword it for free, which is kind of a nice little meta meta prediction, right? Because Zacians think they're all safe by clicking Sacred Sword on Ensign, so the Choppleberry will end up saving them there. And that, that can give you an extra Intimidate. Now, leading with the... Leading with the Shedinja is a little strange, not going to lie. It almost makes me feel like they're definitely going to ally switch. <laughs> Right? It's like, oh. I mean, I could darkness them just to guarantee that I get the hit off. They definitely ally switch here. I mean, this is such a read if I click hyper beam on them and they don't ally switch. So I think a darkness will be just fine. Then I still will follow me. I hope I don't regret this decision later. If I can get rid of the Shedinja as soon as I possible, or at least cover for the ally switch, then I think we're okay. If they don't ally switch turn one, if they ally switch turn one, and I click darkness, they're not ally switching turn two. Because then at least they see that, oh, they almost just lost their Shedinja. Maybe they should switch it out. Or maybe they should stop wasting their time. They don't Dynamax, they just protect Zard. Okay, so Shedinja is not ally switching. I wonder what it's doing then. So this turn was optimal. Okay, well here's a free darkness on Shedinja. It does have Sash, so it will live. We'll get some special defense lower on the Zard, which is pretty nice. I technically lost the most health this turn. They're gonna Willow. All right. I don't think Clefairy cares about that too much. Now, they are definitely going to ally switch now, right? Well, I think now we can go for Max Darkness on the Zard spot and helping hand boost that. Or should we still follow me just to avoid the, any Zard damage on my P2? I'm going to say, yeah, follow me is still best. I think follow me is still best. Keeping my P2 as healthy as possible is honestly optimal. They're going to switch in their Chomp, okay. And then they're going to switch to Endure. Okay, so they're Willow, Endure, Ghost Move, something. I'm assuming that something is Ally Switch. I really hate playing by just spamming Darkness because I would really like to get a Max Strike sometime today. Oh, unless I'm just going to do that. If I'm just going to do that, you could do that a lot. Yeah, great. I'll day. Thanks for stopping by in Series 12, Garchomp. We didn't miss you. <laughs> oh, I remember Garchomp being like an S-tier Pokemon, man. What happened? <laughs> Losing to a little ducky? Oh, shucks. Okay, well... They're not clicking ally switch, man. Is now going to be the time that they do it? I really want to click it, but I can't click it. And that's the kind of pressure that uh, Shedinja puts on a team. 
Okay, I'm gonna darkness shit in. No, I shouldn't. Because it, it's starting to click indoor. I should just darkness Zard and, uh... I don't know, I guess Clefairy's doing fine, so we'll just keep clicking the fun button with Clefairy. I mean, Clefairy is doing its job. It's keeping my PZ alive, right? It's putting enough pressure to where they can't will o -wisp me. I don't know if they're going to ally switch. I mean, if there was going to be a turn for them to ally switch, I think it's this turn. And if they do ally switch, then hey, they, they stalled my Dynamax. I could have been so real and went for a max strike there onto that Zard spot. I was this close. She didn't just always carry ally switch. There's just no op more optimal move for them to carry. Max wildfire is gonna probably not knock out my Clefairy apparently. It's almost like Charizard needs sun or something. Anyway, PZ going for the max darkness here. Onto the Shedinja. We'll finally knock out the Shedinja through Sash and all. No indoor that time. And we're getting some special defense drops onto the Charizard. Next, I think we follow me and Hyper Beam this deck now that it's negative one, right? Clefairy, thankfully, I mean, Clefairy's putting some work, man. Granted, they haven't shown us the Zacian yet, but it is there somewhere. Yveltal. Oh, no Zacian. Yveltal does carry Snarl, which is concerning, but I can knock out Yveltal later with Zacian. Um, I think I'm more concerned with this Charizard. So, I'm going to Hyper Beam it, and I'm going to follow me here, and hope it connects. Dang it. Well, that's already uh, problem number one. At least they can't Airstream. Oh, they... Are they just trying to stall for wildfire damage? Okay, fine. Whatever. But like I said, at least they can't Airstream. And they see them going for the Zard spot, as they should. Okay, we're going to take some Wildfire onto the PZ. Not too bad. It should knock on my Fairy, though. But hey, I just go in with Zacian now. Zacian just comes in here, clicks the Behemoth Blade. And then we still try to knock out that Zard. Ooh, I don't have Play Rough. Yeah, I have to click Behemoth Blade. That's a little unfortunate, if I'm going to be honest. Because you will tell out speeds, Charizard out speeds. Um... Charizard's gonna have to decide, does it want to knock out Zacian or knock out PZ? Oh, messed that up. I still want to Hyper Beam the Charizard though, so I will do just that. And I will Behemoth the... The Veltal, which can't protect. Which means they're also not AV. Which means they could be Life Orb. Which means they could have Heat Wave, hold on. No, they just Sucker Punch. My PZ? Oh, that's enough? Oh, I'm gonna lose. Oh, Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch. Your Life Orb Sucker Punch. I hate that so much. <laughs> life Orb Sucker Punch. With Protect? So, like, what are your moves? You have no Heat Wave? Wildfire now. Oh, I'm gonna lose to Zard. Oh, I honestly... Man, that's rough. I mean, I, I know that Evil Toss can carry Sucker Punch. I know that. But most evil tiles that have life orb don't. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I'm assuming this Charizard has like a max rockfall or something to really screw us over. Hey, the insignia is gonna help <laughs> considering that it, it's it's sucker punch, I guess. I just don't see a way that we can win. I, we do have to fake out this Yveltal first though. And the reason for that is uh, they could Oblivion Wing, which would be even worse. I think if we fake out here, that should be enough damage to KO. They protect Zard. Do they honestly double protect? What is the point? There's one Pokemon left. <laughs> GG. They get the Oblivion Wing. We can't do much after that. Assuming they have it at this point, which they should. I'm gonna Darkest Lariat Charizard just to see if I can get a nice cheeky KO in here, but I don't think I will be able to. It will get boosted by the Dark Aura for what it's worth. All right, they go for Dragon Pulse on Zard. I'm almost shocked that I lost. 
that does no damage. Why did I even attack Zard at this point? That did literally zero damage. Oblivion Wing is going to do a lot more than that, though. <laughs> and unfortunately, since we're Chopple Bear, maybe I should just Flare Blitz that. I didn't know how little damage the Zard was going to do. Honestly, I might still be able to Flare Blitz it. Hold on. If I can knock out the Zard, that'd be a miracle. Nah, yeah, it's a miracle. <laughs> Maybe I'll catch the Zard on a Protect. I don't know. I'll still play this out because if my opponent plays badly, I could still win. They 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 shouldn't throw here, though. It, it seems pretty straightforward what they should be doing. They should just either Sucker Punch me or Oblivion Wing me again. They keep going for deep pulses. Like I said, I take those like a champion, apparently. 34, they Oblivion Wing me again. I die. Yeah. I mean, the one way they could have messed up there was by protecting Zard and then allowing me to take their uh, Evil Tall for free. They crit me just so, just to add insult to injury, but hey, they got me. I mean, they got me with the Sucker Punch on Life Orb. <laughs> oh, I hate it, though. I hate it because it's not optimal, but it works sometimes. So people think it's optimal. Ah, oh, well, on to the next one. OK, first match against an ogre. An Ogre Togedemaru team. Okay. So they got the Lightning Rod. They also do have the priority blockage in the Serena. Landorus and, and Incineroar are both there for the Intimidate, so that shouldn't matter for our team too much. I mean, we really only care about Intimidate for Zacian. And then last but not least, they have their own Zacian. So I think this is honestly not an awful team to bring Porygon Z in. I just do think that if they lead with Ogre, we could be in some serious trouble. Let me take a quick look at this fairy real quick. Has Gleam, Protect, follow me, help me out. Okay. So it does have Protect. So it will be giving Porygon Z the friend guard, which uh, could be relevant, you know. I'm also thinking maybe Blastoise is a pretty decent option for us, all things considered. How about this? We bring Blastoise, we bring PZ. We doubly commit to to our Dynamax options. If they lead Ogre, we probably Dynamax Blastoise. If they lead Zacia, we probably Dynamax PZ or something. And then in the back, I think our own Calyrex and Zacian is just kind of free, right? Not like free free, but it, it, they still do seem pretty decent here. Nonetheless, I haven't played with a PZ in so long. I loved playing with it. I mean, I hated I hated playing against it. I mean, PZ was the kind of Pokemon that really did introduce Urshifu to Choice Band because you had to use Choice Band to break through its uh to break through the friend guard and break through all that. They go Toad tomorrow and Kai Ogre. Interesting. Do we think they Dynamax the Ogre? If they Dynamax the Ogre, they sacrifice the speed. I mean, they're gonna sacrifice the speed out of the way because we're gonna Dynamax ourselves. I'm like considering Still Dynamaxing Porygon Z. It is Adaptability and Life Orb. I don't know, this sounds too juicy not to just hit a max strike onto an ogre when I get the opportunity to. Question is, do I double? Do I call the ogre being scarfed and go for the fake out on ogre? Or do they call the ogre Dynamaxing right now? I honestly don't want to get nuzzled on Porygon either so i'm considering fake out into togo tomorrow and i think that's what i'm gonna do a nuzzle can really throw us back and i don't like that at least for this next turn we guarantee that we out to be the togo tomorrow even though i'm pretty sure togo tomorrow is not like the fastest thing in the world i know it's a it's electric type and it's a pikachu thing it looks like they're not dynamaxing ogre which honestly does concern me because i think i'd much rather deal with a dynamax ogre right now 96 so it does outspeed p2 at least so it is going to be nice faking that out. They are Dynamaxing the Ogre. Okay. I just look at P Porygon. I said P2. It's PZ. I'm going to say P2 this whole battle. <laughs> I, I, I can already feel it. I have base 135 attack, base 90 speed. Do I outspeed Ogre? I think I do. Ogre is like relatively slow, right? I guess we could also just wait a second to find out. They're going to fake out the Blastoise. Okay, so they faked out our fake out. I mean, honestly, fine. As long as we do outspeed Ogre, which we do, and get a max strike off. I, I, I'm i going to be honest. I hope that did more damage. I was hoping that would do a lot more damage. Um, We have the same base speed as Ogre. Ogre has base 140 special defense. That's why that did absolutely nothing. Followed by the max lightning out into our Blastoise. But Tom... 
I think my opponent's plan backfired there. That that's called anti synergy. That is that is literally the definition of anti synergy. Oh no. Okay. Well, I kind of feel bad for my opponent, but at the same time, uh, too bad, I guess. <laughs> I don't want to hydro cannon into this ogre. I'll be honest. Especially if it's gonna sit here and try to max lightning itself. Hey, maybe the whole plan was to boost the Toga tomorrow's special attack. You never know, right? You guys, new season started. I'm recording this on the day of the new season, so we can expect some uh, questionable plays until I get back up to Master Ball, I feel. But regardless, hey, I'll take some, uh, I'll take some uh, free advantage. I'm, t I'm gonna eat a geyser in the face now, though. But at least I will take this token tomorrow down to the not sturdy, probably sashed. Yeah, it is dashed. Here's the nuzzle onto my walk and berry blastoise. Blastoise ain't the threat, buddy. Blastoise ain't the problem. I, I, really good thing that I didn't decide to Dynamax Blastoise because they are focusing the heck out of this Blastoise, apparently. Yeah, there's the geyser. I might lose my PZ here. Yeah, I mean, that's to be expected. At least I got two hits off when I really only should have gotten one hit off. So, hey, we'll take what we can get. If I can get a nice spread move in here, I think we double KO. So, it's a pretty straightforward option. Our option is Calyrex all the way. Um, How low is this ogre? It's, like, really low, right? I believe so. I know Togo Tomorrow is one hit. Ogre should be like, okay, yeah, yeah. This should definitely be a double KO no matter what I do. Because my Blastoise has to recharge this turn. So if I can get rid of both these mons right here, right now, and get a boost on my Calyrex, smells like a pretty good deal to me if I had to say so myself, you know? Oh, the Thunder backfire. Okay. I, if, I were, if I were my opponent, I would definitely switch Thunder to Ice Beam as soon as I possibly can, just to avoid that happening again. All right, goodbye, Togemaru. I mean, Togemaru is not even a bad Pokemon. I'll be entirely honest. Togemaru is actually a threat, especially with Lightning Rod. Like, it's a it's a bulkier version of Raichu, isn't it? I guess Raichu, in my opinion, Raichu should be better. But they both carry Sash, so it's not like it matters anyway. But what does matter is a plus two on my Calyrex, and Instant can't fake me out. So, um, I could... I theoretically could just not attack and protect here just to avoid taking damage from Insane, but I just won't. I'm just going to Astral anyway. I have Sash, so I might as well use it, and then I'll Hydro the Insane. And then it'll probably be like a Zation v Zation in the back, assuming they protect here. Battle was canceled. What a wild ride. <laughs> but hey, we take anything we can get, and that was definitely something. Okay, because one of our battles was a little short, I decided that we can go ahead and just have an extra one. Why not, right? Um, going up against Dialga and Xerneas, which is not a common combination at all, but there is a little bit of a Trick Room package in here if we want to look at the NZD, the Snorlax, and the Dialga. Interesting. Also, the Dragapult's just kind of hanging in there. I'm not, I'm not too concerned with Dragapult, I don't think. I'm more concerned with that Xerneas, and I'm more concerned with that Snorlax, if that makes any sense. Um, no Intimidate on their side of the field, which makes me feel a little bit confident that I could just go into Zacian and do a lot of damage. Like, honestly, like I'm looking at it right now. What is stopping me from, like, clicking these two mons right now? I think in the back, we can afford to bring PZ and Dynamax those mons in the back. But I mean, looking at their team right now, the only thing that I can see that's probably going to be a bad news for us is if they decide to leave double normal types in the Snorlax and the Indeeder. If that is the case, then we Snarl spam. What else can we do? Oh, we start to try to burn things. Hey, I'll take that. Indeedy and Snorlax. Great. Snorlax the Apathetic. More like just pathetic, haha. <laughs> they didn't have sweet speed swap on this team, did they? I don't think they did. So they need Trick Room up for me to be concerned with the Snorlax. At the very least. 
let's see we also get to see what item indeedy is is it psychic seed it's not which means it could be focus sash which means it probably is focus sash so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna be B blade the snorlax spot attempting a ko uh but let's be honest and then go for the snarl here snarl will be able to chip the indeedy at least get rid of its sash if it does have one they do they are going for the follow me and i get some chip damage on snorlax as well hey i'll take that that's really good damage on Didi, by the way. Wow. All right, that, that's definitely enough to where Behemoth can knock it out. And then next turn, I got to burn the Lax because it's about to smack on its tum tum and make me sad sad. Now, I'm just hoping that my Zation is enough to stop the Trick Room next turn. Yawn! I honestly don't mind. They let in Didi and Snorlax and didn't belly drum. Wow. Okay, cool. I just switch. Who cares? Or I don't switch and I go really into this Dialga right now. Those are my two options. I am honestly going to go into this Dialga right now. And I'm also going to Willow the Snorlax just in case. Just in case, it still wants to do something crazy. Now, I hope they aren't able to get Trick Room up, though. I know they're going for it, and I don't think my Sacred Sword can one-shot it. Oh, okay. Well, I think my Sacred Sword can one-shot Dialga because it crits, baby. Okay, game. Thank you, video game. There's the belly. So it was belly drum. They just decided to snarl turn one. Well, I'm scared now, but hey, at least it's burnt. And while I have my Calyrex on the field, it can't eat its berry. So it just took half of its health for no reason. And they don't have Trick Room up. Xerneas now comes onto the field. That's another Pokemon that I'm in fear of. What do I do now? Uh, Sation's kind of a sitting duck now that it's asleep. I mean, we have no choice but to try to wake, right? We have to go through our mandatory sleep turn at the very least. I guess Snarl is our best option here. I'm almost wondering if I should preserve Zation, sack off P2. And then just maybe with Clefairy in the back, I can redirect enough attacks to where Zation can wake up. I don't think they knock out Zation this turn, though. Like, I'm almost inclined to Dynamax here and Max Darkness, the these, these Snorlax, just to get rid of it. I think that's honestly worth. Like, I understand Snarl would slow down the Xerneas a little bit, but Xerneas is going to one-shot anything no matter what I do. At least I could stop this plus six Snorlax and make it so that the Xerneas is the only Pokemon left on my opponent's side of the field, right? We would have uh, theoretically wiped their whole team as long as we knock out this Snorlax, who cl clearly doesn't look like it has Protect at this point. This is where Snorlax protects and Xerneas whips out Trick Room or something. Now that'd be wild. They're Dynamaxing something. Is it going to be the Snorlax this late in the game? At that low HP? It is? It's going to be the Lax. Well, we still have Sash intact. Of course, the, uh, the Xerneas going for a move here can ruin that, but we'll see what happens. Max Darkness now. Onto the Lax is not enough maybe next turn if i can make it to next turn oh maybe this dynamax was a mistake huh there's my mandatory sleep turn they're gonna go for their mandatory geomancy turn and now i'm about to eat a uh, a very painful attack in the face There's Geomancy. Let's see if Snorlax decided to Quake or if Snorlax decided to attack my Calyrex. It can go either way. It all depends on what Snorlax decided to do. Quake! Okay, it did decide to Quake. So it's going to raise back the special defense that I just took from it and it's going to go into my Zacian and unfortunately knock out my friend. How does Kevin win now? I really think I 
I think I lost. Like, what do what do I do in this scenario? I can follow me. But I lose to just a dazzling gleam unless I start hitting the Zern. I'm gonna go in a Clefairy. Cause at least this way I get friend guard, and at least this way I can helping hand boost, and then this way I can go for the max darkness onto Snorlax and hopefully knock it out. I mean, other than that, I really don't know much else I could do. I could try to phantasm their Zern here. I just don't know what that accomplishes. Do they protect Snorlax this turn? They can, but like, what do they gain out of it? Their Snorlax is pretty much dead. They don't gain anything by keeping it alive. They gotta somehow knock out my Calyrex so that I can get its berry back. Okay, there's my helping hand. They still could guard though. Dang it! GG's, man. I take that very well though. Like, shockingly well. I think I protect fairy here just to keep myself alive for a turn. And then I still try to finish off the Snorlax if I can. I, I, it looks like it's low enough health. This is my final turn of Dynamax and then after this turn I get single targeted Calyrex things. Dazzling Gleam, I think I can take another one. I still have friend guard on the field so that's good. Oh that friend guard's making such a big difference like let's be honest. All right. One problem out of the way. We're now a plus one Zern. Issue is our Dynamax is up. I said Zern, Cali. Our Dynamax is over, unfortunately. We do get the Grim Nay. We can't redirect any Dazzling Gleams. It's still not looking great, if I'm going to be honest. It's still looking like a pretty bad time. Yeah, I don't think I live. 81 health, even with friend guard. And they're at plus two. Oh, well, maybe. Hold on. If with two at double. At double, I was three. Hold on, I'm trying to do math. The remain the health that I have left is how much one would do, right? Yeah, hold on. Yeah, I don't live another one. Oh, well, I will attempt. I couldn't lower the speed. I couldn't do anything there. Oh, Zernia is going to take the game because they got the yawn on my Zation, man. They protect. Okay. They might be seeing what I'm going to be doing. I wonder if they want a Moonblast because they think it won't be enough. Should I follow me this turn? Like, what if they Moonblast this turn? Or do they always have every reason to attack me? I want to follow me just in case they Moonblast. I don't think they will, but they might. I mean, I have nothing to lose. I have already lost. I just have to make a play. Yeah, they Dazzlingly. That's fine. <laughs> GG. I mean, hey, if Porygon 2 can maybe live one, it still won't matter, though. The only way out here is if I went and was like, OK, hey, let me try to get a para. Then then maybe I have a chance. But I think otherwise it's pretty much done. I'm going to T-Bolt just to try to get a para. That's honestly my only my only outcome here. But I already know I'm not going to live a single target Dazzling Gleam. Xerneas is going to take the game, unfortunately. They did have Moonblast, so I, I guess I was right to make that call last turn. But unfortunately, stopping my Zacian and then the plus six Snorlax still getting the uh, the Quake off at plus six, even through burn is, is so detrimental. GG's.
So here you have the rental code for the Porygon Z team. Now, this team went two and two today, which is kind of how I expected it to go. A lot of the teams that we played against today were a little bit wonky because it's like the first day of the season. And like some of them had to be played on casual battles because their ranked ladder wasn't open yet at the time of recording. So there were kind of a little bit of off meta stuff that maybe the creator of the team wasn't prepared for or just in general. I mean, we also did try to force Porygon Z in pretty much every scenario. I'm pretty sure there was going to be scenarios where Blastoise was the, the primary tar Dynamax target, or at least should have been, just to get constant cannonades going. But yeah, nonetheless, the team is very fun. If you guys want to try it out, grab that rental code. Make sure to check out uh, Larissia's stuff down below in the description as well. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. You got another got another video with an extra battle. Don't get used to it because these take way too long to record. But of course, if they're going to forfeit turn two, I'll give you guys an extra battle. Regardless, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all the continued support. I'm Kevin, the Spooky Sports of Great Night. Peace out. Bye bye.